Good morning, folks. We had a second video uploaded yesterday tracking the solar storm effects on ground perturbations and the geoelectric field potential. While people were online here and there, almost no country was unaffected by the social media outages that began in the 8 o'clock hour in the morning in the U.S. Both Facebook and Instagram were hit. It was in the next hour that most mobile carriers across the continent began experiencing a surge in issues. This is when the storm was settling in. T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, and E&E &E and others internationally as well. A strange outage took out security machines in Auckland Airport, and then the exact same glitch took place in Phoenix, both during solar storm effects peaks. And of course, we had the blown transformers in fair weather as well. Always a surge in those. Here's what the solar wind looks like this morning. It's been a sequence of intensifications, each pushing plasma speed higher than before. Even without dense shock waves leading the streams, they are leading magnetic instability with each successive impact. And as forecast in the afternoon video yesterday, the geomagnetic storms reignited and persist on and off into this morning. Let's quickly get over to spaceweathernews.com where there are no sunspots, no solar flares or ejections. The coronal hole up north is responsible for the solar wind we're taking at Earth and should last another day or so at least. Meanwhile, we've got more plasma filaments incoming from the limb. Eyes on them if they make it across to center disk. Indonesian news reporting a sizable eruption at Sinabung. This and a five-pointer to the north in China were the top lithospheric events of the last day. Let's jump now to the outer reach of the galaxy where the Magellanic Clouds live. We're focused on the smaller one today, which contains some of the most incredible sights in our neighborhood, but now also has produced its largest nova ever, and indeed, one of the largest nova seen across the cosmos as well. Top story is about geoengineering. A major meeting is taking place this week, and we have excellent reporting from Daisy at CB. Lots of new faces like this one, who complained that he was stuck in model world, really wants to get out there and spray the sky. And then, of course, we had Captain Chemtrail himself, Dr. Keith. You might not have recognized him as his beard is trying to hide his looking like an underfed teen with widespread carcinogenesis. He said he knows spraying will be misused, but he doesn't care. He wants to spray anyway, and they are going to do a large-scale test next year from a gondola balloon. It was nice to see the mention of previous experiments in the sky and the presence and voices of those strongly against weather modification linked for you below. In addition to the solar storms, pole shift, health effects, and everything else, Morpheus will be speaking on spraying the sky at Observing the Frontier 2018. Hashtag Skyception. We've got wind maps, special informative null school run, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.